Albert Einstein, the theoretical physicist widely acknowledged as one of the greatest scientists of all time, famously said, Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited to all that we know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world and all that there ever will be to understand. Imagination is the highest freedom of all, and the one that no one can deprive us of. The greatness of creative imagination is praised not only by the romantics and artists of this world, but by the brightest of scientific brains. From Alexander the Great to Napoleon, Plato to Spinoza, Isaac Newton to Albert Einstein, and Henry Ford to Steve Jobs. Ideas are the seed of an engineer's plan, and he can mobilize them with spirit and energy. And the minds of humans are, um, are made fertile through research and development, through curiosity, which will lead into finding new ways of doing things, into finding solutions to problems. An endless sea of ideas constantly flow around our planet, streamlining inspiration, fueling the minds of entrepreneurs, and ultimately driving progress and innovation. These kind of people drive humanity to excellence, humanity to, to the so-called El Dorado. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund is seeking new ways to inspire education to fuel the Nigerian knowledge economy through innovation. These are the chronicles of the journey to institutionalize research and development in Nigeria. Hello and welcome to this edition of TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift. I am Stanley Bentu. Research and development, or R&D for short, is one of the most important parts in making a new product or service. When you want to excel from competitors, of course, you can't stay in one place and do the same thing. There must always be breakthroughs so that the company or small business that you are running is still one step ahead of the competitors. Well, the same goes for countries. Breakthroughs come from innovation. Yet, since colonial times, Nigerian education curricula and teaching methods seem to be based on teaching children what to think rather than teaching them how to think. Innovation either features sparsely or not at all. Well, no wonder the executive secretary of TED Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, speaks frequently about why R&D, innovation, and the content component of our education system all need an upgrade. TED Fund has been implementing a paradigm shift, which places R&D as the centerpiece of its intervention. This initiative automatically makes it a natural partner for any organization that has a passion for applied research and innovation. Professor Bogoro even mentioned recently that the fund sets aside an amount of money to fund partnerships to this end. In respect of research and development, I, I appreciate this. For me, my staff know it, that if there is anything you want to see me excited about, is to talk about partnership in respect of research. Believe me, in our annual budget, we have, I think for two consecutive years now, we've set aside one billion for partnership. Just to tell you the extent of how much we're taking. So I, 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 you better imagine that uh, maybe I'm opening a window for you. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to introduce you to an organization in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, 
that is doing exciting things in the world of innovation. This setup proves that a group of young Nigerians assembled in one place and presented with the right resources can generate ideas to solve many of the nation's problems. Take a look at this. Abuja, the capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and home to over two million people, is known nationwide for the hustle and bustle that relates to politics and power. There is almost an unspoken understanding that when it comes to business and industry, Lagos is the hub. But when it comes to politics and policies, Abuja is the place to be. And yet, Abuja is so much more than the sum of its parts. The capital city, when closely examined, can reveal a few pleasant surprises. One of them is located in the Ako area, along Airport Road, not far from the Centenary City. Innovate Hub is an innovation startup-driven organization that grooms generations of innovators, inventors, and researchers across board. Innovate is a focal point for innovation startup incubation, technology transfer, knowledge and skill importation, prototype development and fabrication. The idea is to aid organizations and individuals seeking to transform their ideas into inventions, inventions into solutions, and ultimately solutions into enterprises. Through different programs and initiatives, the hub brings together brilliant minds and gifted hands from across board who receive access to mentoring, expertise, enabling environments, and cutting-edge facilities needed to make their dreams come alive. For prototype development, Innovate offers extensive product development services, expert designing and engineering, advanced CAD services, mechanical design services, and prototyping. Maribel, and Maribel is a product designer with Innovate Hub and she's going to be showing us around and uh, giving us a little insight about what happens at Innovate Hub. Hi Maribel. Hi. Okay, so what are we about to see? Right well, we are going to go through the, the centre. We're going to see the various uh, offices and the workshops downstairs. Okay, let's go. Beyond that, the hub provides facilities for creative arts and industrial design. Everything from textiles to shoe manufacturing to ceramics, introducing new technologies to firing and glazing processes. Walking into the hub's showroom gives one the surreal feeling of being in the laboratories of historic inventors like Thomas Edison or Nikola Tesla. The room is packed with created, tested and fully functional prototypes as proof of concept, either undergoing the patent procedures or simply awaiting optic from the industry for aesthetic perfection and mass production. There are two major programs organized by Innovate Hub designed to raise a generation of innovators, inventors, and researchers in Nigeria. The Innovation Fellowship for Aspiring Inventors and Researchers, which is a six-month innovation startup initiative of the Israeli Embassy in Nigeria and the Office of the Vice President, and the Research for Impact Initiative done in partnership with TED Fund. These programs focus on medical devices, simulations, food technology, agriculture and food security, renewable energy and disability inclusion. Countries do not easily reinvent themselves as leading innovators. Too many fixed routines and cultural factors can get in the way. For those that do make the attempt, 
Innovation excellence is often built in a multi-year effort that touches most, if not all, parts of the nation. Any country looking to make this journey will maximize its probability of success by closely studying and appropriately assimilating the leading practices of high-performing innovators. Taken together, these form an essential operating system for innovation and success in the global knowledge economy. Well, it's really mind-blowing the experience that one gets when you visit the Innovate Hub. The ambience is quite ideal for creative thinking. I sat down with Deji Ige, Director of Communications at Innovate Hub, and Dr. Baku Chiroma, Assistant Director of Research and Development Centers of Excellence at TED Fund, to get a deeper understanding of the partnership between these two organizations and how that is important to the concept of institutionalizing research and development in Nigeria. Here's how it went. The Innovate Hub was established on the, um, on the backdrop of giving an environment to Nigerians, giving them wherewithal to thrive in terms of innovation, in terms of entrepreneurship. So this is a focal point um, where people come to transform their ideas into invention their invention into solution and solution into enterprise. In Ave Hub here we run programs that advance uh, innovation and build human capacity. Uh, one of which is IFAIR, Innovation Fellowship for Aspiring Inventors and Researchers. And this is our flagship program. Started running since last year and we have the second edition uh, running currently. And just last week, first week in December, we did our first uh, kickoff event. That is number one. Number two is a Research for Impact Workshop. It's a program that is being funded by TED Fund, um, which will work with researchers to advance um, research and development um, amongst lecturers in universities and polytechnics. The leadership of TED Fund graciously agreed to, to be part of the uh, arrangement is uh, to, to establish this center and the role we played is mostly uh, uh, let's say not just advisory but also financial in the sense that we contributed financially to setting up this place. A debt fund is looking to help re researchers to translate their works to real impact in the society. Uh, what TED fund did was to invite nominations uh, to from, we selected two institutions from each of the geopolitical zones. Uh, so we had 12 participants that we brought into Abuja, brought into the center, and then the idea was this. We've been, uh, we've been doing everything possible at TED Fund to institutionalize research and development, research for development, innovation, to encourage that and to, to, to really embed that culture of research as a way out. We, we split them into those four groups and ask them to sit down and work in, in teams of three and come up with solutions, with unique solutions or innovations in those areas. And at the end of that, four very exciting products emerged and the outputs uh, are exciting as, as we speak right now. Uh, patenting processes are in place, uh, are, are, are in the process mm -hmm. to, to get patents on, on the, these products that came out from the uh, output of research for impact. Okay, in the past uh, couple of months, we've worked with um, about 26 universities and 26 participants have benefited from this, you know, across the country. We How have does it work? Okay, so what happens here is that TED Fund um, brings, appoints participants, lecturers, experts in their different field. They come to Innovate Hub. We work with them to think through um, ideas 
to think through technologies and come up with a commercialization model for those technologies. How to take the technologies to the marketplace. This is essentially how it works. And we have two approaches we use. We use the needs-based approach and the supply-based approach. The needs-based approach is where we look at challenges in the society and we say, okay, Nigeria has unemployment issues. Nigeria has climate change issues. Nigeria has environment issues. Come up with a technology. You are experts. You are subject matter experts. You are researchers. Come up with technologies that would solve these problems. Why will help you build a profit model around it? So that is the needs-based approach, driven by the needs we have in the society. The supply-based approach is they come with their technology. These are researchers, remember, these are experts. They come with their own research, their technologies, and they say, okay, we need you to help us take this to the market. Uh, we need you to help us translate this to impact, economic value. We help them do that. We walk through some you know, commercialization processes to make sure that these um, technologies pass the different texts for commercialization, such as viability tests, desirability tests, defensibility tests, feasibility tests. We make sure they go through all of those and um, eventually get to the marketplace. One of them is um, the um, Afri food for kids. So this is um, a formula for, for children, for toddlers. Um, that is very affordable, that is safe and highly nutritious. And this formula was made from available uh, materials, contents, um, locally, from different, and it's so fantastic, highly nutritious. And this, this was tested in different labs by different people, away from the people who, who produced this formula, the Afri, Afri, Afri kid food. food. Mm. So that's number one. Another one is um, the METAC. METAC is, um, is a, a device that is in, installed in a smelting plant that traps um, um, metallic particles, mm. traps um, metallic particles and from going into the atmosphere. So when whatever goes on in the smelting plant, some particles shouldn't get into the atmosphere because they are harmful to, um, to, the to, to the environment, to humans. So this device traps such. It, 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 it may look, look so simple, it may sound so simple, but it's a lot. And this can be very, very useful to the industry. And this is what we need in the industry. So meaning these academics, have provided solution for the industry, which is what we've been talking about, about the, the triple helix um, synergy among the government, the academia, and the industry. So in this instance, TET Fund is government. Um, those researchers and scholars from the academia, uh, representing the, the academia, then innovate. And the investors that may come to invest in those prototypes are representing the industry, which, which means the triple helix um, synergy can actually is working around here. Now another of those, um, those prototypes is, it, it's, is a device, a monitoring device uh, for, the, for the agricultural sector, mm -hmm. uh, rice monitoring, uh, sorry, rise disease monitoring um, device, disease and pest monitoring device. This is a device, when you put it in the rice um, plantation, it detects diseases. It's, um, it's smart as well. So it sends messages to the farm owners of tr to the control room where these plants are being monitored. It quickly senses that. It senses it on its own, pest and disease. And that's so fantastic for me. And this is what many plantations need. What do I see in the next 
5, 10, 15, 20 years, I see Nigeria becoming, you know, better than, uh, you know, leapfrogging the shining stars like the Asian tigers, Dubai, and so on and so forth. I see that happening here because we have what they don't have. We have the sheer scale of human resources, the human capital that we have. And, you know, uh, economies of scale, you know, tells you quite simply that where you have such obvious advantage, if it is properly harnessed, mm. properly used, then the, you know, the sky will not be the limit. It will be just a, a pit stop in the journey. Well, if you have any doubt of the fact that R&D propelled by innovation is the driving force of technology and technological change, and beyond that, economic progress, then consider this. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, during his first official trip to Sub-Saharan Africa, visited Innovate Hub to encourage innovation, research, and development in Africa, which he strongly believes will promote a more inclusive and sustainable economic growth in, on the continent. And I was really eager to, uh, to come here and, in a sense, see where things are, both to see some of the uh, incredible innovative work that's been done, but also to try and understand uh, what the environment is like uh, for innovation, for entrepreneurship, how um, that can be made uh, even better going forward. So I really wanted to hear from people who are on the front lines of this work, not only having uh, great ideas, but, as Deji said, finding the ways to, um, to make them real uh, and to, to bring them to market. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time both uh, seeing some of the <laughs> remarkable things that I think we're about to see, but also hearing from, uh, from colleagues about um, how they've gotten to the place they're at and how uh, we and they can do uh, even more to build this culture of, uh, of innovation and entrepreneurship that's already uh, so powerful here in Nigeria. Well, and that's not all. On the premise of the partnership between Innovate Hub and TED Fund, and the successful conclusion of the Research for Impact Capacity Building Program for researchers, innovators, and the academia in Nigeria that was held at Innovate Hub, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogorum visited the hub for deliberations on furthering research and development, as well as innovation drive in Nigeria. You cannot develop products from research if you don't have new ideas. That is what innovation is all about. It's about thinking beyond the ordinary, translating deep thinking into new products that never existed before. That is a simple definition of innovation. And it could be tangible or intangible products. To even innovate mechanism of governance is innovation. Definitely profound one for that one. And like I've always said, yes, we have emphasized STEM because the most competitive nations build their competitiveness around prioritization of STEM. There is no nation that can advance if it has no infrastructure. If we partner with the best and the most innovative, together we will develop the capacity to change our nation. It is not politics that changes our nation. It is resolve and innovation. It was indeed a November to remember for TED Fund and Innovate Hub. The most important lesson that I learned from this partnership is simply this. A child is not intelligent simply because he or she can memorize the multiplication table. A child is intelligent when he or she can apply the multiplication table to solve problems and technologically advance the society that he or she belongs to. A curiosity emerges when one analyzes the education system in Nigeria and in a country in, well, say, Europe. 
While the European child is still playing with building blocks, the Nigerian child is already learning to memorize complex mathematical equations. Memorize complex mathematical equations. But fast forward 20 years later, and the European child is now designing rockets to go up to space. But the Nigerian child is seeking employment, probably in a non-scientific organization. What changed along the way? Well, Ted Fund says that what is missing is the concept of imagination, where knowledge does not just exist for knowledge's sake, but can be applied to solve problems through innovation. And that is the paradigm shift. Join us again next time. Until then, thank you for stopping by. Good night.